So, John, today, theoretically, we're going to be talking to a man named Tinky. We don't know much else about him. We know that he gets under Mike Rapoli's skin. That's for sure. He's a he's a very eloquent guy on Twitter. Guy or girl? We actually don't know yet. We don't know if he's a guy or girl until we actually see them. Um, but he has agreed to come on the show and talk about a myriad of racing issues. And you know, he hasn't done any interviews as far as I know right. thus far. Um, I guess we're just that special, John. Well, that that shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody, let, less you know you and me. Um, but it is it is a big deal. I mean, this is like up there with uh, LeBron James's decision of where he was taking his talents, um, and Vader being Luke's father. You know, this oh, is like spoiler. This is oh, spoiler. sorry, spoiler. <laughs> this is this is like a big. It's not going to be kind of a reveal, but this is going to be a really big deal. Solomon Rushdie being interviewed. I mean, like you know, Tinky has come out of hiding basically um, and picked plucked us out of all the different media outlets that that uh that that are in our our niche market here in thoroughbred racing joe he picked us he picked us i feel like maybe we're even on the bachelor like he gave us the rose that we're going to be doing but all i can tell you is that it's going to be a rip roaring great conversation um and and i brought my popcorn so i am ready to be entertained so we've been counting down to this for a little bit right now. We need a drum roll sound effect, I think, for this next guest. Uh, he is, to me, one of the most interesting people in the horse racing sphere right now. And he also has the distinction of being the only person whose Twitter account got better when they paid for more characters. He's taken the racing Twitter world by storm. Tinky, welcome to Rail Talk. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my my first public appearance, so to speak. And uh uh, under the nom de plume and yeah. uh you know i've enjoyed uh, the work that you two have been putting out for some time and uh, uh it should be fun yeah i mean it's, we're, we're honored to have you um let's just jump into it like this because this is the first anonymous guest that we've had on the show obviously we don't have your your video your picture unless you are in fact wc fields and <laughs> we might distort the audio a little bit so without giving away too much of you know who you are and your background can you just tell us give us some some clues and some tea leaves and you know how you got into racing some of your formative memories like what brought you to the world of horse racing well I grew up in the Chicago area, the greater Chicagoland area, and uh, the genesis, the the singular genesis of my interest in horse racing and ultimately uh, much more was that I had a close friend, really my best friend during those days, and I still am very friendly with him, although we live in different places, pretty far apart. Uh, he and I... Um, we're big sports fans. We um, had a particular interest in basketball and liked to go to basketball games, et cetera. And his mother uh, brought us to Arlington Park, the old Arlington Park. And this would have been in the early 1970s. I mean, I, you know, I like to say that I'm not a spring chicken, and I guess that that makes it fairly clear. Uh, and I would say that both of us uh, were really captivated quickly. I mean, there was there, there were a number of things that resonated. I, I don't have a specific memory of that day, but I know that it was a catalyst for the two of us choosing to uh, uh, to go out to the races on our own. We weren't yet old enough to legally bet, and yes, I guess the the excitement of being able to do that was something uh, that played a, a role. Um, but really, I think what what brought us to develop a passion so quickly for the game was the rapid realization that there was a huge amount of information. Um, and that it needed to be processed in certain ways in order to gain some kind of advantage. I mean, we, we understood that. Uh, you know, we, we hadn't read racing forms previously, but the first time and the second and the third and the 20th and the 100th time that we o cracked open racing forms in those days, paper racing forms, you know, it was, it was fascinating and thrilling to have all of these puzzles uh, that we could attempt to solve and that there were such potentially uh, exciting, tangible results, betting the money that we had in our pockets in those days and maybe walking out of the track with significantly more. So I really did cut my teeth early on at the Chicago racetracks 
and uh, betting on horses was the the primary initial driver. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't bet on football, baseball, basketball. It was you know horse racing. It was clear was much more interesting uh, to me and to, to my friend. Uh, and uh, and so we really dove into it and began our our initial education in the game that way. <laughs> 